Chapter 16 of My Glean. Up until now, not much has been said of Fingolfin's youngest child, his daughter, Aradel. She's been living in Turgon's kingdoms this whole time. She's been living in Nevrast and now in Gondolin. But, you know, after spending 200 years in the hidden city, she gets kind of restless and wants to go exploring in the lands beyond. So she asks her brother Turgon leave for leave to go. But he really doesn't want to give permission because he says he feels that something bad might happen to the both of them if she does. It's a little premonition. However, he relents, telling her to go with an escort to visit their older brother Fingon over in Heathloom. But she says, I'm not your servant. I'll go where I want to. So she sets out with her three escorts and commands them to go east with her to seek out the sons of Feanor, Kelegorm and Kurufin, who she was friends with actually back in Balinor. Yeah, they went hunting and hung out a lot together back in the day. And the group, this little group, asks permission to pass through Doriath, but they are denied because, well, you know, Fingol kind of hates most of the Noldor now, especially those who are friends with the sons of Feanor. So instead, they go along the northern border of Doriath. Oh, but remember, hey, that's near the Haunted Valley, so Aradel and her escort become enmeshed in shadows, and they actually get separated from one another. They try to find her, but then spiders crawl out of the ravines and chase the members of the escort away. So they return to Gondolin by the skin of their teeth, and they tell Turgon, Yeah, we lost your sister. <laughs> so Turgon is super upset right now. And meanwhile, Aradel tries to find her escort as well. But after a while, she says, Ah, to heck with it. And she just keeps riding east, because she's pretty fearless. And she makes it to Himlad, but Kelegorm and Kurufin are visiting Karanthir even farther east. So she hangs out there for about a year, exploring, having fun, hanging out. But, you know, even after a year, still no no Kelegorm or Kurofin. And one day, uh, she's wandering around, she passes over the river Kelon and enters the forest of Nan Elmoth. You might remember Nan Elmoth is the same forest where Thingol got enchanted by Melian a long time ago. So now this is the realm of Aeol, the Dark Elf. He's originally a kinsman of Thingol, but when the girdle of Melian was set up, he actually fled Doriath and hunkered down in Nan Elmoth, where the trees are so thick and dark that the sun doesn't shine through them. And he's kind of strange. He prefers darkness, shadows, and starlight. He he doesn't like the Noldor, believing them to be the cause of Morgoth's return and all the problems in Middle-earth right now. But he is a big fan of the dwarves. In fact, of all the elves, he's the closest to the dwarves in actual friendship. He even occasionally visits them at Nogrod and Belagost. Wow, so they learn skills from him in smithwork and he learns skills from them. He even invents his own super strong metal called Galvorn, which is what he always wears as armor when he travels. And one day he sees Aradel wandering in his woods, and so he sets enchantments so she can't find her way out. And if you're not creeped out by this, you should be. She eventually finds her way into his halls and he welcomes her there. And then after a while, they get married. And she is, in fact, a willing participant. Uh, elves can't get married against their will. That just doesn't happen. But, you know, it's still kind of weird. And no one from outside knows what has happened to her. And uh, Aeol kind of keeps her all to himself. She's allowed to travel wherever she wants, except she's not allowed to go see the Sons of Feanor or any other Noldor. And she has to follow Aeol's preference of going out in starlight and darkness. They eventually have a son, uh, whom she secretly names Lomion, which is Quenya for Child of the Twilight. But remember, Quenya is banned, so she just kind of names him in her head. 
but Aeol doesn't actually name him until he's 12 years old. And when he finally does, he calls him Maiglin, which means sharp glance, because his eyes are piercing and he can read the secrets of people's hearts. When Maiglin grows up, he looks Noldor, but his personality is just as dark and unpleasant as his father's, and he becomes a friend of the dwarves as well. However, he loves his mother more, supposedly, and she tells him stories of the Noldor and the House of Fingolfin, and he really takes note of the fact that Turgon has no male heir to his throne. And after telling all these stories, Aravel, she starts to wish that she could see Gondolin again. She's kind of getting nostalgic. Now, Maiglin is very sneaky. He wants to know the secret of how to enter Gondolin, and he bides his time with his mother, thinking he'll eventually get the answer out of her, because she doesn't tell him. She ke she's keeping her promise to Turgon by not telling anyone how to get in. But in the meantime, Maiglin tells Aeol that he wants to seek out the sons of Feanor, and this makes Aeol mad because he hates the Noldor. So Aeol, tol uh, Aeol tells him that if he tries to go visit them, he'll lock him up. So after this fight, Maiglin doesn't go abroad with his father anymore, and Aeol does not trust him anymore. Then one day, the dwarves invite Aeol to their midsummer festival, and he takes his leave, so Aravel and Maiglin are left alone, home alone. And Maiglin convinces his mother, hey, let's leave for Gondolin, saying there's nothing for them in Nan Elmoth. But she's kind of proud of him for wanting to take action, and so they tell the servants that they're heading north to see the sons of Feanor. But in reality, they're actually going west towards Gondolin, so they're being kind of sneaky and secretive. However, Aeol comes back sooner than expected, only to find them gone. He's mad. So he goes riding after them, even in daylight. But when he finally gets to Himlad, Kurufin is suspicious about what he's up to. So he stops him and demands that he tell him what he's doing there. And Aeol lies and says, Oh, well, I heard my son and wife were visiting you, so I thought I should come along, too. And Kurufin just laughs out loud and says, What are you talking about? No, they rode west, so either you're lying to me or you've been lied to. And Kurufin tells him to go away, and as Aeol is leaving, he says to him, Oh, it's good to have a kinsman like you in need. Then Kurufin snaps back and says, I am not your kinsman. That's your wife's title. Don't you flaunt that. You stole her from us, so you cannot expect to be considered a kinsman. Now go away, back to your little forest, because I predict that if you follow them, it's not going to end well for you. And this, of course, makes Ale hopping mad, and he heads towards Gondolin, figuring that's where they went if they went west. He eventually catches up enough to see them entering the hidden gateway, and he can see them from afar because Aradel always wears silver and white, like she never wears any other colors, so she's really easy to see from far away. So she and Maiglin, they make it into Gondolin. They pass the seven gates, and oh, Turgon is just so pleased, and everyone's amazed she's back. He's amazed by her stories. He likes Maiglin. Not sure why, but he does. <laughs> but Aeol sneaks into the entrance, and the guards there are shocked when he claims that Aravel is in fact his wife. So they take him to Turgon for judgment. And Turgon basically welcomes him. He calls him a kinsman and tells him, oh, by the way, you can't ever leave the city because according to the law, no one who comes into Gondolin from the outside gets to go back out again. And of course, Aeol answers super politely. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. He goes on a little rant, insulting the Noldor and demanding that Maigling come back with him to Nan Elmoth. And <laughs> Turgon replies, yeah, well, you know, if it weren't for the Noldor, you'd be a slave in Angband right now. So either live here or die here. It's your choice and your son's choice. Then Aeol grabs a small spear that he was hiding and says, I'll take the second choice and so will my son. But Aradel jumps in front of Maiglin. She gets hit by the spear and later that night she dies. 
because the tip was actually poisoned. So the next day, Aeol is taken to a huge cliff on the side of the city. And all the, all the while, this whole time, Maeglin doesn't say anything. He just stands there watching. And before they throw him off the cliff, he yells at Maeglin, So you forsake your father and his kin, ill-gotten son. Here shall you fail of all your hopes, and here may you yet die the same death as I. So he falls to his death, just like a Disney villain, and it's interesting. After that, Idril, the, son, uh, the daughter of Turgon, she kind of starts to mistrust her own people because she doesn't, she doesn't feel right about this punishment. It just doesn't sit well with her. But after a while, Maeglin becomes really successful in Gondolin. He's good at mining, bringing a lot of wealth into the city through jewels and gems, as well as improved weapon making. He proves himself to be really brave, skilled, wise in council, and almost everyone likes him. Except Idril. She, uh, he is desperately in love with her, although he doesn't reveal this to anyone, but she suspects it. She doesn't like him or trust him. And you know what? Not only that, they're first cousins, and elves do not marry their first cousins. So because of that, she's just super creeped out by him, and she knows he's really messed up in the head. He desires her so much, it's more like he wants to control her or take possession of her, and his heart becomes really dark because of this obsession. So he just kind of watches her all the time and doesn't care that he totally creeps her out. Super selfish behavior. And thus it was in Gondolin, and amid all the bliss of that realm, while its glory lasted, a dark seed of evil was sown.